Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chen Chang and Thomas that cannot be here now, uh, and all the organizers for the invitation. It's my first time here in, in at the Schrodinger Institute, and I'm very happy of uh, visiting you here. Uh, so I'm going to tell you about some recent work that was uh, uh, conceived and developed uh, in honor to Mackenzie, especially for uh, the number, special number uh, uh, in, in remembering him, that appeared in journal in geometric mechanics, I think. So this talk is going to present a new structure and how. Uh, I will try to convince you that this is something very natural to consider, to relate it with some other things around the literature, and I will go very basics. So, at least from the beginning, no, at the beginning. I hope, uh, please, uh, uh, you will interrupt me if there is any comment or, or, or question or historical remark. So, I will uh, tell you uh, about these three things. I mean, Lee by Algeras at the beginning, as I was saying, it's going to be very basic, but I want to give uh, like a, somehow the perspective that was useful for us to move forward. Then Lee to Algeras, and so we start with categorification, and at the end, the lead to by algebras that were introduced like 10 years ago by Chen Chang and in parallel by, by uh, and co-authors and in parallel by, by uh, Ping Shu and co-authors. Uh, these were like two different approaches, somehow equivalent. And we have a third one, if you want now, at least in the street case. Um, I hope this more or less simplifies some of the issues and the relations between these structures. So, yeah. Sorry? Yeah, so thanks. If you, let me uh, be on that comment. Uh, if you go with the structure uh, from the cohomological viewpoint, you will find most of these things like uh, very simple because uh, uh, they they are in fact uh, higher structures, but uh, of a very low degree. And this is more or less the perspective that Chen Chang and his co-authors were following at that moment, no, like ten years ago. But then several issues pop up, no, or or, or difficulties. And so at this point, I should mention that I, I come from algebraic topology and homotopy theory. And some non-written no, dispute in algebraic topology is between homotopy and homology. You know, there are people that is like a going like radical with homotopy and some others with homology. It turns out that, the, of course, these two viewpoints complement each other, but uh, they overlap also. And then it's a matter of taste or, or convenience what side are going to follow. And then, uh, if you want, what is happening here is that we are following a homotopy viewpoint. And then we will see that some gradients, some structures, some theories will be very natural. And just to give you a very simple instance of this, uh, we should think on dot can correspondence. On the one side, you have the, the, the chain complex, which is a, also of a homological nature. And the, on the other side, you have the, the simplicial. Uh, uh, no, abelian object, which is a, of a homotopical nature. So this would be like a homotopy approach to lead to bialgebras. And I hope you uh, can tell no, the, the different perspective as long as we move forward. So to start with, lead bialgebras is very classical. And I have to go the other way around. Here, so I will tell you some things about Lee algebras, then Lee by algebras, then a bunch of related structures like Manning triples, Dreamfeld doubles, and match pairs. Then I will move into Poisson geometry and drop a few words about the integration. So 
I said I was going to be very basic. So Eli algebra is just a vector space. I'm thinking in real finite dimensional vector space and we have the Lie bracket. So what I am interested uh, here at this very basic level is that we can see either this structure as a differential graded algebra no? with a degree one differential or as a Gertenhaber bracket or a Gertenhaber algebra. No? So the result is that uh, the three pieces of data are equivalent. No? Either a, br a, a Lie bracket on the vector space, a degree one differential on the exterior algebra of the dual, which from the graded like geometry viewpoint, we should think of, I don't know, no commutative functions of sorts. And also, this equivalent to a Gerstenhaber bracket on the exterior algebra of the vector space. So, as I was saying, this is very basic, but this is going to be uh, in the core of our results. So, we have these three equivalent ways to see the algebras, and then uh, the definition of by algebra can be expressed uh, in the following way. I have a vector space, two Lie algebra structures, one on G and on one on the dual, and then how to say that both are compatible? Well, from my viewpoint, it is best to see both of them in the same place, no? the exterior algebra of the dual. Then I have a differential and a Gerstenhaber bracket, and they should be compatible in the sense that the Leibniz rule works. This is not how they typically appear, the Levi algebras in the literature, but it's completely equivalent. And I like this idea of having the two structures in the same algebra. And as I was saying, when we move higher or, or, or double, this is going to be very, very useful. So the equivalent formulation that it is more common in the literature is to tell uh, that the compatibility with, between the two Lie algebra structures is that the DG star is a one cocycle uh, in, in this uh, uh, complex with uh, coefficients in the uh, Alcyon representation tensor itself. And then there is yet another equivalent way to describe this compatibility between the two Lie algebra structures, which I like it a lot, and I spent a lot of time <laughs> computing it. Maybe it's very simple for some of you, but uh, again, I, I couldn't find it in the expressed uh, like this in the literature, but it's uh, this formula, where you say that, uh, okay, uh, what, what is that I like about this formula is that uh, it is expressed only uh, considering the two brackets, no? the brackets on G and on G star, and it is very symmetric. Uh, here, with the triangle, I am representing the quadrant representation, so quadjoint representation, so G acting on G star and G star acting on G, because both are the algebras, but at some point they are not compatible a priori, but if this formula holds, then it's just a reformulation of the previous two. And I insist that uh, there, the bracket on the right-hand side is implicit in the quadrant representations, but I have no differential. No? Um, from, for instance, from this formula, very simple formula, which is by definition, it is rather obvious that the definition is uh, self-dual, because if you look at the uh, expression on the left, uh, right hand side, it is completely dual. And then, uh, I don't know, sometimes this appears as a result, no? but uh, if you write this down, it is rather trivial. Um, well, just to say that uh, there is at least one example in the talk <laughs> I'm going to mention very quickly that uh, SL2R can be seen as, a, as an example of a Levi algebra, no? like this. And then, uh, Okay, so what are many triples, infrared doubles, and match pairs? Okay, I'm going to tell all of these, all these definitions in a single slide, and somehow they are all pretty much reformulations in the following sense. Then a many triple consists of a Lie algebra. Sorry, there is a typo there, no? It's a Lie algebra, no, up there. Uh, with an invariant non-degenerate symmetric linear form. And 
it, it need not to be positive definite. In fact, it's not going to be definite, positive definite because there are two, there, there must be two isotropic subalgebras, P and Q, such as uh, they are in direct sum. Okay? So this is a money triple. And every time you have a Levi algebra, no? so again, sorry about the typo in the first line, it's a, G is just a Lie algebra. And then every time you have a Levi algebra, you can build its Drinfeld double, which is just G plus G star. And then the, the bracket you define there uh, to, to get a Lie algebra uh, is expressing this formula over there, where you have a, the, the cross terms related to the Waldstein representation. And then the, the proposition tells that, of, uh, okay, if you have a Levi algebra, you can build a double and you get a Manning triple. And conversely, if you have a Manning triple, using the, the bilinear form, you can identify one of the, sp the, the, the subalgebras with the dual of the other, and you end up having a Levi algebra. So this is just another way to see at it, but it is very profitable. No? For instance, uh, Ettinger and Kazan use this uh, Nifel double to quanti quantize no? the, the, the Levi algebras. And I still want to say something about match pairs. So what match pairs are? Well, a match pair consists of two Lie algebras with actions, one on the other, one on the left, one on the right. Uh, where? In the Manning triple, uh, P and Q? No, because since the bilinear form is non-degenerate, yeah, and both are isotropy, really? Uh, because P and Q sum up everything, you know? Exactly, because P and Q sum up everything, so both have a dimension Exactly, exactly. At the end of the day, they have the same dimension, but it can be derived from the fact that, non-degenerate. Yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's somehow implicit in the proposition if you want, but, but it is just that, that the, uh, both of them cannot be very, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, but, but let me uh, come back to, to the last thing I want to tell you here. You know how I'm uh, doing with the time? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what a match pair is, match pair is something more general than a, than a, a by algebra. Uh, because here you have two the algebras, one acting on the other, and these two compatibilities, these two last equations must uh, hold. But then the, the, the relation between match pairs and, and, and by algebras is that the uh, two Lie algebras on, on a space and the dual form a match pair with a quadjoint representations, if and only if uh, they form a by algebra. So, the, the language of match pair gives us another way to describe the compatibility between these two pieces of structure that we have in the vector space. No? So let's go Poisson. And this is somehow uh, very important for the talk because it's, it's going to, to justify somehow the need to move from a point to, to some more general manifold in the base. And it, it's going to give us some idea of yet another reformulation of the compatibility in the definition of a Levi algebra that is going to be very profitable for us. So in a vector space, a linear Poisson structure uh, no, is just a Poisson bracket, so a Lie bracket satisfying the Leibniz rule, uh, uh, for which linear functions are closed under bracket. No? So the f that formula there holds where uh, L, uh, Eta, for instance, is a 
linear, the Faberwise linear function defined uh, on, on the space by a covert, okay? So the uh, simple characterization tells us that uh, a bracket is linear if and only if the by vector uh, seen as a map from T star V to T V, from the cotangent of the space to T V, is a linear map. And what does it mean that? Well, that uh, T star V fibers naturally over V star, uh, T V over the point. And then if, if this map is linear, then uh, it's just a, a way to rephrase the, the linearity of the bracket. And what I want to, for you to keep in mind here is that the by vector, which is a Poisson structure, is a map, and then uh, it's a morphism. And then uh, defining a Poisson structure plus extra compatible structure will be related for this Poisson by vectors viewed as a map to preserve the extra structure. And then uh, there is this uh, Poisson algebra uh, uh, duality that uh, is the same to, to give a li linear Poisson structure in a vector space or a Lie algebra in the, in the dual. Basically, by the, the formula that is up there. No? And there is a straightforward extension to vector bundles uh, where you have a duality between linear Poisson structures and Lie algebra. Okay? So now we have these three formulas instead of the one above, because besides the firewise linear functions, we should keep track also of the uh, basic functions or Faber-wise constant functions. Also, the idea is that the uh, two basic functions uh, uh, should commute, was on commute. Uh, the bracket between a, a, a linear and a basic is, is linear, and the, the bracket of two linear is, is, sorry, is basic, and the bracket of two linear is linear. Okay. So I find it very interesting that uh, uh, you have like a perfect uh, a duality okay, that will express, again, in several instances in the next 40 minutes. Um, the proposition, again, uh, uh, going back to Lie by Alceras, which is the object I want to, to describe or to study, is the following. That, a Poisson structure on a Lie algebra defines a Lie by algebra if and only if the by vector is a Lie algebra dimorphism. So this is how unconvenient if you think that we were doing finite dimensional uh, uh, linear algebra to express the compatibilities, and now we are moving to a geometric object. No? Uh, but uh, I find it very interesting that the, the, the exact compatibility between the two Lie algebra structures can be seen as saying that this Poisson by vector is a Lie algebra morphism from uh, between uh, Lie algebra over different bases. No? The second one is just a Lie algebra. The first one no? is a, an incarnation of the quadratic representation, if you want. No? Is the, the, um, it is this viewpoint that uh, held uh, uh, no, uh, King Shu and, and Mackenzie to, 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 to give another viewpoint on the integration of uh, uh, Levi algeroids. No? But before them, uh, the integration of Levi algeroids by Poisson group was a result by, by Dreamfeld. No? So let me tell you very quickly what a Poisson group is. It's just a Lie group with a Poisson structure. No, I'm sure most of you already know this, but let me just put things in order. Uh, the Poisson structure and the group structure must be compatible. And again, this compatibility can be expressed in several different equivalent ways. Uh, you can say that the multiplication is a Poisson map. You can say that the graph of the multiplication is a coisotropic submanifold. Or you can say that the by vector, viewed as a map from T star G to TG, is a Lie group polymorphism. And again, we see that they need to move from groups to groups because uh, T 
tihtar gji, i zonit të bje e li grupoj, o bërë qistar. And this thing on the left, here, is just the action group of the equation representation. Okay? So once you compare this uh, formulation uh, with this one, here at the bottom, and knowing that uh, the integration of uh, algebraic morphism work uh, uh, well, no? what is called the, the second least theorem, then you gain a very simple proof of uh, this theorem by Dreamfeld, that any Lie by algebra integrates to a Poisson group. And if the group is simply connected, then there is a one-one correspondence between uh, the Poisson structures on G, no? and on, on the group and on the algebra. And as I was saying, if you look at the, at the, forget about this zero. If you, uh, an alternative proof nowadays can be usually two to integrate the Poisson tensor with as a map, as a morphism. And then just pay a bit of uh, attention to details to, to, to be sure that the, the tangent of the algebra integrates to the tangent of the group oh, yeah, and, and, and these kind of things. But if, if, if the group is sort of simply connected, is simply connected, uh, the tangent is also going to be simply connected, and so on. But uh, something interesting of this viewpoint is that it naturally extends to a correspondence between Poisson groups and Levi algebras, which was developed uh, uh, by Alan uh, Weinstein, by, uh, I think he did the, the, integration, the differentiation part, because he didn't talk about the, he, he expressed a formula describing the compatibility between the two Lie algebra structures, but, uh, but not uh, use the word Levi algebra. I think it was Mackenzie and, and Shu that, uh, that use it. So this is the first part of the talk. Um, I just told you a lot of basic stuff. I know it can be a bit uh, no, uh, confusing because there are so many equivalences, but uh, this is what I'm going to appear to, uh, to apply in this second part. Uh, when we are going to categorify algebras, Lie algebras. So I'm going to talk about Lie 2 algebras, saying uh, some things about two vector spaces, which is just like a, from the, some mathematical viewpoint is kind of empty, following what uh, Alex was saying. Okay, if you go to the homological viewpoint, it's just a two vector space and a map. There is no richness there, but uh, if you, Here, here, I didn't uh, get into detail, but it is a, a straightforward, exactly. Everything is straightforward. Here you will have uh, the, the cotangent of the group point, which fibers over the, the total space of the uh, Lee algebraoid associated to it, and here you get a TGTM, no? the tangent of the groupoid is a groupoid over the tangent of, uh, of M. And with the algebraoid, it's the same. T star A is going to be uh, an algebraoid over A star, and TA over TM. Exactly, exactly this. So I think it's a very simple way to rephrase things, yeah, and prove things. So let me go higher. No, which is something that is uh, fashionable nowadays. So I'm going to talk about two vector spaces, which is just this shift of perspective from homology to homotopy, then discuss a bit about tensor products, tell you what a lead to algebra is from this viewpoint, how they are equivalent to cross modules, and something that I like it a lot is the Bayle algebra perspective, which uh, for people working in, uh, in, in, in the manifolds might be very simple, but uh, uh, I think it somehow uh, is enlightening uh, uh, for the people more used to, to the classical geometry. And then how, how to apply all these things to the integration of lead two groups. So a two vector space, as I was saying, is a group of object or a category object, it doesn't matter, in vector spaces. The thing is that when you have an internal category in vector spaces, 
uh, which means that uh, you have a, a vector space of objects, another of arrows, and the file structure map, source, target, uh, unit, multiplication, and inverse. Well, inverse, you can forget about it, because it turns out that because of the rigidity of the category, I mean, every time you have a, a, like a section, you, you will have a splitting, uh, or if you want, building the nerve of this uh, 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 two vector space, you will get a, a, a simplicial vector space, which by the way is just a two term complex. It then ends up being equivalent to just giving two vector spaces and a matrix, a linear map between them. Okay? So on the one hand, you apply the, the normalization, if you want or keep the kernel of the source and, and, and look at the target map. And you can recover the multiplication, the uh, inverse and everything out of this piece of data, okay? The other not so interesting construction a priori is that if you have a map like this one from a vector space to another one, you can see that V1 prime is acting on V0 just by, by adding no, vectors in the image. And then you build the, the semi-direct product and you get a, a groupoid a, here, action groupoid of the action in, uh, induced by this map. Here I'm seeing at, at V1 prime, which is a vector space as a abelian Lie group. No? Why do I call it doi Kant? Because a two vec, as I was saying, it's an internal category in, in vector spaces. If I build a nerve, it's going to be a simplicial vector space. And Doi Kant tells you that simplicial uh, objects in an abelian category are the same as uh, chain complexes. It is very interesting that under this correspondence, which is not homotopical, it works no, even before passing to homotopy, uh, higher and groupoids correspond to Chain complexes concentrated between. Exactly. And then, uh, for instance, something that is very illuminating from this homotopy viewpoint is that duality should be somehow shifted. So I even have issues calling it shifted because the idea is the following. If we restrict ourselves to these objects, which are uh, Two vectors, two vector space in the sense of, of uh, Bynes and Kranz. No? I'm not following Caprano and Bobolsky, which is an, another totally different definition approach, but a Bynes and Kranz approach that was, I don't know, very popularized recently. No? Um, so the duality should be considered by taking a, a dualizing object on degree one. Okay? So the dual two vect is if you, if you think homologically, is taking the dual complex and making a shift to have it in degrees one and zero. But if you think homotopically, it consists just as uh, the internal home from the V, the two back, to R1, okay? Which is a, the abelian group of rank one, simply connect abelian group of rank one. Sorry? Well, I was discussing this with Stefano last week. <laughs> but the, the, the point is that the objects here are, are uh, morphisms, OK? Uh, linear, no? Morphisms of, of, or linear functors, if you want. And uh, arrows here are uh, linear natural isomorphisms, no? or natural transformation, because it, everything is going to be invertible. So every time you have a two-category structure, and a linear structure, you have, in fact, a two-vector structure, no? if, if they are minimally compatible. So let's talk about tensor products very quickly. What I can tell you about them is that they don't work very well. No? And in fact, uh, what I wrote there is that, okay, two-vector spaces are simplicial vector spaces and chain complexes. I can see it either one way or the other. But uh, both categories, Simplicial vector space and chain complexes have natural tensor products, but none of them restrict to two vector spaces. And this is a mistake in the literature that goes back to, to Baez and, and Kranz's original paper, where they have wrong formulas there. 
in this context. I mean, I, I think that the, their viewpoint and, and the work they did there is, is, is great. I mean, most of what we are doing is based on, on, on their contribution, but at, in this very particular issue, there was a problem, which, for instance, uh, Dimitri Reutenberg, in a later paper called uh, On Weak Lead to Ulceras, tried to somehow to, 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 to fix, but again, there is a, a, a huge problem there, which is the following. When you consider the level-wise tensor product uh, between these two, two beds, so the objects are going to be the tensor products, the arrows are going to be the tensor products, and then you want to define a source target unit multiplication and inverses level-wise as a tensor product. But this is wrong in the following sense, that uh, the domain of definition of the multiplication is a fiber product, and the fiber product does not commit with tensor products. So to have a baby example, think of R, again, viewed as a group over the point, and compute the tensor product of it with itself. So we have two, two simplices, which are one zero, zero, tensor zero, one. One means the, the, the uh, this is like a, a chain of composable arrows in R, no? which is just two elements in R, one and zero, the first copy. And then zero, one in the second copy. And then these two things are non-trivial in the nerve, and then I take the tensor product between the, the both of them. And when I take the, 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 the from this guy, the three uh, faces are projected on the first coordinate, one tensor zero, which is zero. On the second coordinate is zero tensor one, which is zero. But when I do the, the third projection, the third phase, is the level-wise uh, composition or sum in the group. So I get one plus zero and zero plus one, one tensor one, which is non-trivial. So this is a non-trivial feeling of the, and this is another feeling of the same horn, which has these two sides, zero. No? Here I have zero, 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 but there are two different ways to feel it. So this shows that the, uh, the tensor product, level-wise tensor product on, uh, uh, of simplicial vector spaces, which are Li1 group, groups, are not going to be a Li1 group. Sorry? There is not a unique home feeling condition here. There, there, are, there is like a, suppose that you have zero tensor. If you want to have a, a one group, yeah, a two bed should be unique. In order to be a two bed, it should be unique. I see. So there is higher information that should be should not be ignored. That's the idea. Okay. So to define two algebra, we need to deal with bilinearity, but the category of two bed is not a monoidal category. So what to do? Well, there is this simple idea that is very profitable of looking at a group of objects in the category of Lie algebras. And this works perfect. Uh, you define a little algebra as this. You have two Lie algebras, G1 and G0, and then you have five structure maps, source, target, unit, multiplication, and inverses, satisfying the, the expected uh, identity. And then uh, it ends, sorry? Yeah. Why do I, if you truncate it, uh, what, I understand. Uh, I think uh, what uh, Dima Reutenberg did in that paper is a bit on this direction, like saying, okay, if I want to work in these two levels and take tensor products, things are not going to be must vanish in, in a huge place, which is like the homotopy truncation, no? But uh, we can discuss it later, okay? Uh, so what I was saying is that when you look at this definition, a group of objects in Lie algebras, you get two Lie algebras and five maps, but you can see that there is redundant information. You can, you can build everything with a, just a, a little bit of data. 
If you forget a, 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 about the brackets, you have a two back, so it's going to be encoded in two vector spaces, no? the kernel of the source and the G0, let's say. And then, besides the map that goes from one to the other, you will gain an action of the thing on degree zero on the thing on degree one, which satisfies these following two conditions. So, when you put these two conditions uh, to define a, a bracket in the direct sum, kernel of the source plus G zero, uh, well, you, you recover the original bracket. So, what I'm just saying is that you can reduce all the information behind Elite to Algebra into what is called Elite Algebra cross module. And what is this? It's just to give two Lie Algebras, H and G, a map of the algebras, a morphism of the algebras, and an action on, of G on H, which is compatible with the equation with the algebra representation in, in this way. Okay. So uh, this T should be replaced by delta and that's all. Okay. So you can see it's a Lie, simple uh, Lie algebra, a Lie, uh, linear algebra exercise to lead to algebras can be revealed out of these Lie algebra cross modules, and they define equivalent categories. So, from the Bayes algebra perspective, and as I was saying, this is more like a look into the gradient geometry viewpoint, you should think of this graded vector space. I mean, the, the object I'm going to study is a two-term graded vector space, finite dimensional over R. V1 plus V0. This is the object I want to study. So two vector spaces. Okay? If you want uh, RP, RQ, I have two degrees. It is related, but uh, I think. Uh, yeah. I should say that this definition of algebra. Is attributed to, to Eckhart, Mein Reken, and, and Jeffrey Pike, former student of him. And I think, well, I know previous versions of it appeared in the work of, of Camilleria Sabat and, and Marius Kreinik, but I think their approach, Eckhart's approach, is uh, illuminating. It's very simple. And, it, and one important piece of information is that it is not built over a complex, it's built over a two term graded vector space, V1 plus. V0, just that. And then, what is the Bayes algebra? It's the version of the exterior algebra on this higher uh, 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 world. So I will take the exterior algebra of V0 dual, tensor, the symmetric algebra on V1 dual. And the, there is a bigrading. I have a, a set grading, uh, and it's not just a, a, you should be aware that this is not like a super vector space, where the grading is in, it is zero, one, and then one plus one is zero. It's a set grading, which happens to be concentrated on degree zero and one, you see? So the, I think there is a subtle difference there that you will reach later, but the, the point is that a, a it's not a sub, uh, yeah. And then, regarding the by degrees, I think this is very simple, but it's very fruitful. Uh, there is one degree that comes from the original grading, zero, one, that you see it in the second coordinate. And there is one degree that comes from the fact that we should think of Lie algebra as tangents to, to, to Lie groups, or things that are living in degree one, you see? So then, when you look at this uh, Bayes algebra with this by grading, okay, uh, you don't have any of these arrows, neither the black ones, neither the, the red one, okay. But we can reformulate some of the structures we were dealing with uh, by looking at this 
double graded vector space. So what is a two vector space? We knew it is something very simple, it's just a two vector spaces and a, and a map between them. I can see it as a vertical differential on the Bayle algebra, so it's this guy here. And then this one is going to induce all the others if we demand the differential to be, to satisfy a Leibniz property with a wedge product, okay? So all the vertical arrows are a consequence of this one, which is just a map from V1 to V0, the dual, no? So there is yet another way to look at this, which is looking at the Bayle algebra of the dual graded vector space. And then it's going to be again a vertical differential. So very simple what I'm saying here. But let's talk about Litu algebras, which is a bit less, a, a bit more interesting. Then a Litu algebra is the same as to give a double complex structure here. So I have the vertical, which is a, the, the map from, from one to the other, and then I have the horizontal differential, which is now generated by these two guys. Down here, I will have the structure of Elias from on V0. And well, it has to be a bicomplex and a differential, square zero, and satisfy Leibniz, okay? Uh, and sorry? I'm not writing every axiom here be, because of a matter of size, but uh, I'm just trying to give a, a, an idea of how things work. You know? But what I mean here is that this guy that is here has a vertical component, a horizontal component. This is going to be a degree one differential, you know, square zero, and both square to zero and the sum square to zero. You know, the, so, and exactly, and the, moreover, it has to satisfy the Leibniz rule with respect to uh, the wedge product, okay? So, these are the things that has to satisfy. And then, I think it's very interesting that if you take the dual graded vector space and take the Bayle algebra, then these two pieces of information express in a different way. The vertical differential is going to be still a vertical differential, but the horizontal differential transform into a gerstein harder bracket. Okay? And just to drop a word about weak little algebras, you can recover them from this perspective if you put here, if you only consider the, 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 total, com, the total sum, and then you demand for a degree one differential, and then besides the, the, these two components, vertical and horizontal, uh, two minus one components will, will appear, which is the Jacobiator, no? here. It is equivalent, yeah, okay. So, From where? Uh, as I was telling, one degree comes from the additional grading that you have in, and the other one, at least for me, is the, the geometric motivation for which, for instance, when you have a Lie group or a Lie algebra, you put them on degree one, because as if they are uh, encoded in infinitesimal information. See? Exactly. Well, it is formal at the beginning, no? Because, uh, yeah.
Chen Chang, eh, let me. Chen Chang, let me tell you the following. Going, going back to vector spaces, okay? When you build the exterior algebra, you are assuming that the, the covectors are degree one. See? This is very simple thing. This is a reason for which there is one degree on which in the exterior algebra or the veil algebra, which is a natural generalization, things have degree one. And the other degree is because we have an original degree, okay? So, you see. And then, uh, how to integrate lead to groups? Well, uh, you can look at two vector spaces as VB groupoids over a point. So this is just the same thing we had before, but now I think as a, of this as a fiber structure. I have a point downstairs, which is a group, and then I have a vector bundle and a group of structure, and they are compatible. And the point is that when you differentiate these kind of objects, what you get is a VB algebra, which is a Lie algebra, Lie algebra, V1, V0, over a point, and this is like a silly, if you want, these two things are the same as two vector spaces and a map, but the viewpoint, the homotopy viewpoint is going to be very profitable. Here the differentiation is just taking the, the normalization of this simplicial object and the, uh, it can be all, always inverted by the inverse of the can, or if you want, because using geometry, because uh, the fibers, uh, uh, and the orbits are, are I mean, everything is, is, is very simple from the geometric viewpoint. And then, lead to algebras can be seen from this uh, uh, double structure picture, which is what uh, Mackenzie was working during several decades, as LA group points over the point. So I have one lead algebra here, one lead algebra there, I use the double arrow to represent the Lie algebra or the Lie algebra. And then this is a group of objects in Lie algebra. This is what I define as a little algebra. And now I can, I, I want to integrate it to a, some two group. But what I can do instead is differentiate it to a double Lie algebra over the point with a trivial side. These two? Yeah, this is a V1 line. Yeah, you're right. But what I mean is that the, these two kind of structures are equivalent. But you should replace here V1 prime, no? I mean, I hear the same. This will be the H and G. But what, uh, forget for a second about the, the, the constructions and think of the two structures are equivalent. This is what I try to say. So then, Lead to groups are group of objects in Lie groups, and you can rephrase them using Lie group class module, which is the same thing we were doing before, but now in the context of Lie groups. So this categorification can be rephrased as a cross module. And the theorem says that every Lie to algebra integrates to a Lie to group. Here, no. It's not going to be equivalent. Sorry? Here. Lead groups lead to groups. I, I mean, sorry. It's a, a mistake, no? A lead to groups are lead group cross modules. It's, it's exactly, yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, there's a typo here. It's lead to groups can be seen as lead to, uh, as lead group cross modules, the same fashion it happened infinitesimally. And then let me give you a comment on a simple proof of this fact that I can always integrate a lead to algebra to a lead to group. Instead of integrating to the left, I differentiate to the right. And I have a double Lie algebra, which means that you have a Lie algebra here, a Lie algebra there, and two Lie algebra structures are equivalent. In the sense that if you go to the uh, uh, f uh, complex of forms, these are two differentials that should commute. No? Yeah. Everything is strict, yeah. And then once you have this thing, which is symmetric, 
instead of integrating horizontally, you integrate it vertically, which you can always do it because these are just Lie algebras, and, and the, we showed with a, a, in a previous work with the Enrique and Alejandro that the, the, all the structures integrate very well. And then what you gain is a group object in Lie algebras. And something funny about this group object in Lie algebras, which you would like to integrate to a group object in Lie groupoids, is that since it's a group object, a straight group object, for instance, the orbits are also groups, Lie groups. And then they don't have pi 2, there are no obstructions to integrability, and then you can integrate it using the theory of integration by, by creating Fernandez uh, to a, 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 a group object in groupoids, which is a Lie to group. Lie to groups, yeah, sorry about the typo. Strict Lie to groups. So let, this is something I think would be very nice to understand, is when you put this in infinitesimal context, this red arrow, red because I, I'm trying to avoid it for, for now, but of course I am very interested. How, if you don't have this red arrow, and you had all, all the other information, what you have is a lead to algebra, and you can integrate to a strict lead to group. So then how to uh, see globally uh, this uh, weak lead to algebras, no? What, is, what are the global logics integrating them? I don't know, but uh, I mean, it's something that some people is discussing, no? I remember discussing last week with the, sorry? Who, who? One of them, I was uh, talking about this. I mean, it's a very natural question. I, I thought about it my, uh, several times, but uh, last week I was talking about this with uh, uh, Mikel, a postdoc uh, uh, there in Gottingen, no? Yeah, yeah, in a more general setting, I know Chen Chang is working, and, and also I was talking about this uh, with Christian, told me he was looking about this general thing of differentiating a higher group to higher algebras and, and going back. But then, then let me rush during the last minutes to tell you about the, the third level of complexity <laughs> on our work, which is, we, I talked about Levi algebras, Lead to algebras, and now I'm going to talk about lead to by algebras. Okay, so to do this, I need to move to the geometric setting. I am kind of forced to do it. No, so the, I think this is very interesting because uh, it is not linear algebra anymore. No, so the, 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 the differential geometry appear naturally, and I wonder how many of these things have a, a, a counterpart in, in, in abstract, uh, no, for an abstract field or, or something like this. But I will talk a bit about double vector bundles, their duality and triality, compatible Poisson structures, and our main theorems, and if time permits, application to lead to by algebra. But I don't think time will permit most of it. Are, are we very strict with time here? Yeah, more or less. Can I take like a five more minutes or something like this? Okay, doesn't matter. I, I will rush, and then we can talk about any of these uh, later today or tomorrow, no, feel free to ask me. I will be around until Friday, okay? So, what is a double vector bundle? It's a crazy diagram like this. It's a, a manifold D, which is, happens to be a vector bundle over B, and it have a, uh, happens to be a vector bundle over A. But how to encode vector bundles or on, on the smooth category? Maybe I should mention Grabowski and Rotkiewicz here because they came with a very useful, profitable viewpoint in which you say the vector bundle has four structure maps, if you want, projection, zero section, sum and addition, but only, uh, so, sorry, sum and multi uh, scalar multiplication, and the scalar multiplication is enough to recover everything else, okay? For instance, the zero section, the base of the manifold is going to be the, the image of multiplying by zero, no, and you can use the, the, the multiplication by a scalar to build out of any point a curve, no? Taking V, you, you build a curve TV, and then you look at the speed of this curve at zero, and then you, you get a way to, to realize 
points as vectors tangent to the to the fixed points or or yeah to the fixed points where you can sum up etc you need a regularity condition no but checking this regularity condition you see that the the easiest way to describe double vector bundles is saying that you have one multiplication by scalars which is horizontal the fixed points are a one sorry the, the fixed points are b the vertical the fixed points are a and they commute okay and the, some extra piece of information which is called the core appears which is just a kernel of uh, the two projections if you want intersection of the kernel so besides a and b you have an extra c that is hidden in the shadows and then typical examples are the tangent of a vector bundle you have t tm and the vertical vector bundle which is isomorphic to e and the cotangent of a vector bundle which is t star e phi varying over e star and in the shadows it appears t star n so you see that these three guys that are in the diagonal e e t m appear again by with a swap and a sound duality just a important simple proposition is that every double vector bundle is split so up to isomorphism every double vector bundle is a plus b plus c one side the other side and a core no you have to pick a choice of a connection and if you see what a, a, an isomorphism is like this in these cases you will recover the, the classical notion of a connection in differential geometry okay so you have to make a choice to split but just to have an idea of what things are you can think of this thing as having a b and something hidden and duality and reality why why is that because out of one of these double vector bundle i can take the horizontal dual which is again a double vector bundle I write it the uh, bullet. You have B. This is a dual vector bundle, but then it fibers over C star, and A star goes to the core. So you see, it's dualizing horizontally, and the base has some magic there. But you can do the vertical dual, D A to D star A, and then some magic appears on the other side. These two duals. Uh, of course, if I dualize twice, I get the original one, but what if I start combining horizontal dual, vertical dual, horizontal dual, vertical dual? It may seem a priori that you will have infinitely many, but uh, it turns out that these two on the extremes are in duality. So there is a non degenerate pairing between the flip of one and the other. So they share this side, C star M, C star M. And there is a simple formula which relies on a choice, but uh, which does not depend on the choice, that tells you that the, these two duals are in duality. So at the end of the day, you have kind of three duals. That's why it's triality. Or if you want to be very precise, there are six, because you, uh, what you gain after dualizing vertically this one is not that, but the flip. So you, you should take uh, these three and the flips. But I will... Uh, let this for a moment and <coughs> as i was saying the group of dualizing operations has order six for triple vector bundles this group was studied by mckenzie afonso rsas and russian meta and it has order 96 so this combinatorics goes crazy you see and here is maybe our contribution so let me i know i'm over time but let me take a couple of minutes so if you have one of these double vector bundles what is a compatible Poisson structure pi in blue here it's a Poisson structure on d for which is linear over a and over b so it's double linear no? but then how does it reflect in the duals if you dualize, dualize to the left which is a horizont horizontal pay attention to the top you will have the dual of a linear Poisson structure is going to be a Lie algeroid and this Lie algeroid gives you what is called a VV algeroid vector bundle over an algeroid if you dualize on the right you get a VV algeroid which is vertical okay so this way a Poisson structure reflects on the three duals 
And then, what if I two? What about if I have two Poisson structures? Well, I have the green one realized as a VV algebra horizontally, and a purple one uh, vertically. This kind of objects in the middle is called a double algeroid, and it it is it was a bit like the Moby Dick for Mackenzie. No, he was writing papers during 20 years looking for this infinitesimal counterpart of double groupoids. No, there are several variants on his definition, but I think now we 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 have a, a better understanding, and it is just like a system if you want of Lie algebra is compatible. And then when you look at the duals, for instance, the, vert the horizontal dual keeps the, the Lie algebra, vertical algebra structure, but transforms the horizontal one into a Poisson structure. And what you get here is a PVV algebra, a, a, a Levi algebra, which is also a vector bundle, and similar to the other side. So the new thing in our work is to say, OK, since we have three vector bundles, maybe the, the Generalization of a bi algebra, which is two structures on the duals, which are compatible, is three, three Poisson structures on the duals, which are compatible. And we get double Lie bi algebra. So we have a Poisson structure and two bi algebra, a two Lie algebra structures, and the three things reflect on the duals. So this structure is dual, is a, the, like the correct generalization of a a, a Levi algebra, you see? Because uh, it is self-dual or self-trial. And what we did, it, it was uh, published this year. There are a lot of compatibilities that I am not expressing, but are very natural. And what we did is to show that uh, when the central structure is symplectic, you get simply a cotangent of a bi algebra. So this should be thought of a Dreamfeld double. We discussed the integration and differentiation of Poisson double groupoids, which were introduced by Mackenzie, and a double groupoid plus a compatible Poisson structure is a Poisson double groupoid. The, the most known ones are the symplectic double groupoids, which appear in the literature. Um, the integration is possible under some topological assumptions. And from the point of view of the Veil algebra, you have in the Veil algebra three pieces of information a horizontal differential, a vertical differential, and a Gertrude bracket. They, these two should commute, and they should behave the, uh, as if a uh, Leibniz rule with a bracket. So I know it, it kind of get crazy. I'm sorry about it. Just to finish, I will tell you that this double Levi algebra, which is a double vector bundle with three compatible Poisson structures, which we claim that is like the natural generalization of Levi algebra, uh, when a, one side is trivial, it's a point. Then this gives you a Lie 2 by algebra, which was studied by Chen Chan and several other people. And they can be expressed as cross modules, and they can be integrated. Uh, uh, sorry, they can be viewed as very natural thing in the Bayle algebra. This gives a clear connection with the L-infinity approach by Bai, Sheng, and Su. And as I was saying, it can be integrated using the very same techniques of, OK, I differentiate first, and then integrate on the other side, and then use that everything is integrable. So sorry about the extra time. I will be around if you want to discuss some details. But I think with this point of view, we managed to relate the previous contributions and, uh, and simplify them considerably, at least in the street case, of course, no? Thanks a lot. <laughs>